There are many alumni of Oklahoma State who personify its land-grant mission of instruction, research, and extension. Perhaps none better than Ray Booker. Doyle Ray Booker was born on November 26, 1934, near Antlers, Oklahoma, the oldest of five children of Ray and Geneva Booker. Times were hard, and Ray's education often took a back seat to the needs of family and their survival. Although he graduated high school, he was hardly prepared for college. Ray's interest in engineering was not a dream from his childhood, rather a point of survival he noted one hot Oklahoma summer. He was digging ditches for a new highway near Antlers when he noticed one particularly well-dressed foreman. Dad noted, he's clean and I'm not. I want to do that. And so literally when we came onto campus, that's what he thought. He was, whatever that was that didn't involve digging ditches, that's where he was going to go. Ray enrolled at Oklahoma A&M in 1952. He was also involved in ROTC and the Baptist Student Union where he met a young lady who piqued the interest of the quiet young man from Antlers. There was one time he was walking across the corner over there by Bennett Hall and my mom was riding a bicycle across the intersection and she whistled at him and she said, hi Ray, and he just about fell over. Um, <laughs> and then he asked her um, if she would be his date to the picnic, the BSU picnic out at Lake um, Carl Blackwell. Ray married Arlene Hobbs in 1956 and graduated from Oklahoma A&M one year later. His career in engineering first took them to Grand Prairie, Texas, where he was an engineer with Chance Vought Aircraft. Ray was made a second lieutenant by the Air Force following his ROTC training in Stillwater and was sent by the military to Penn State University to study meteorology. He finished that coursework and then he was uh... So he was encouraged to consider working on a master's degree. But he was first told, you don't have the credentials for a master's degree. Uh, you came from Oklahoma State University and you don't have a very good uh, background compared to our Penn State students. And uh, Ray surprised him. Ray supported his family by working as an early television meteorologist. Like most engineers, Ray liked to tinker in his basement. It was a pastime that would lead to the development of dozens of instruments, four private businesses, and several highly classified contracts with the federal government. He had a persistence. He had a, I want to do it type attitude. And he loved airplanes. And he made a career built around that love. Ray's inventions proved to be a windfall in meteorology and aviation communities and led him to form his first company, Weather Science which developed instruments and modified aircraft for cloud and precipitation studies. In 1965, Ray moved his family and his basement business from Pennsylvania to Norman, where he worked with the National Severe Storms Laboratory. Uh, he went on then to uh, develop more and more sophisticated instruments over time and became world-renowned for his development of airborne optical systems. In 1974, Ray founded Aeromet, which has grown into a 200-person operation specializing in meteorological services and airborne operations for the military. Several of Ray's inventions have been used by the government, including the U.S. Missile Defense Agency and the U.S. Defense Department. His work was critical during the Cold War and was adopted by President Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative to track and intercept missiles, systems still in use today. Ray also led a team to develop the first aircraft to be flown with or without a pilot, a concept we know now as unmanned aerial vehicles. I think the thing that set uh, Ray apart was his accomplishments in the area of aviation and, and uh, what he did early on, very creative and inventive. And his early work with that was, you know, right at the leading edge in the aerospace industry. In 1989, Ray founded his last company, Aviation Technologies, which leases aircraft and equipment for business and special mission applications. It seems every mission directed by Ray Booker has soared to success. I think he, he knew how to take his ideas and put them, put them into action and make them, uh, make them attractive to other people, and then he knew how to deliver the product. He was very, very good at working with uh, high-end people in the, in the business that he was in. And he, he just had a, a way with uh, exuding confidence 
that if you did business with Ray Booker, he was going to take care of his business and it was going to be the product you were going to get was going to be excellent. Throughout his career, Ray never forgot the little college that gave him his start, a place where Ray's greatness was first seen by others who then helped him to see the greatness within himself. Oklahoma A&M, for him, was his first chance at the future. Here he went from being really undereducated in antlers um, to being educated here at Oklahoma A&M. Um, and it laid the foundation for everything else that he was going to do. Ray has been a fervent supporter of students at OSU, serving as a mentor to many just as he was mentored in his days at A&M. He helped bring dreams to life during OSU's first comprehensive campaign while serving as chairman of the OSU Foundation's Board of Directors. Ray has served for several years on the College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology Associates and has endowed two scholarships and a professorship at OSU. His longtime support of his alma mater has been recognized by the university with numerous awards and the naming of the Booker Residence Hall in 2005. Uh, from his humble beginnings coming to OSU, uh, he's obviously a very uh, a brilliant intellect, very smart, uh, that used the information, the knowledge he gained here and went on to become quite a successful person. In 1992, Ray's A&M sweetheart of 36 years lost her battle with cancer. He found a new love in a longtime business associate, Linda Parrish, whom he married in 1994. Ray and Linda are passionate supporters of the arts and also share interests in college sports and flying, an activity well suited for a man with certifications as an airline transport pilot and a commercial helicopter pilot. Ray also enjoys time spent with his three children and eight grandchildren, often at Cowboy football games. If I were to pick one word to describe Ray Booker, it would be remarkable. From humble beginnings to a, an extraordinary career. You know, uh, when I think about people who really illustrate what OSU is about as a land-grant university, Many uh, of our students are first time to college, and certainly was true back when uh, Ray came to school here. Ray is the gold standard of alumni, representing the alumni of Oklahoma State University. He really epitomizes what it's all about. His, um, his passion for other people and his compassion for other people, and his sheer will, the determination to make something out of nothing. It's just the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I love that when my own kids need a role model, they don't have to look any further than my dad. Whether on the ground or in the air, Ray has guided his career, his family, and himself to greatness. Ray Booker, 2012 Oklahoma State University Alumni Hall of Fame.